Throughout the annals of college sports history, there are a few games so vibrant and so monumental that they only need to go by their nicknames for college sports fans to know exactly who we're talking about. The Iron Bowl, Red River Showdown, Civil War. Sometimes it's so full of hate, all you need to know is that it's the game. But there's only one rivalry hell-bent on determining the nation's oldest and most important question. Wheat or corn? That would be the annual rivalry game between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Iowa State Cyclones, known as Farmageddon. In this video, I and my friends the Aggieville Alley Cats will attempt to educate the masses on the glory that is Farmageddon, which is surely the greatest rivalry of all time with no equals. Hello everyone, I'm Ace Edwards, right alongside Connor Balthazor. And we are the Aggieville Alley Cats, a K-State sports podcast asked by our good friend Lucas to hop onto his wonderful channel to talk to you a little bit about everyone's favorite corn versus wheat battle. And that, of course, is Farmageddon. Yeah, it's every farmer's favorite internet-based agricultural battle. So put on your overalls and your mud boots and join me out in the crop fields as we examine Farmageddon, the country's greatest rivalry. The game itself began play in 1917, when the Kansas State Agricultural College farmers, led by Zora Clevenger, took on the Cyclones of Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts, led by Charles Mazur, in Missouri Valley Conference action. The farmers were 4-1 and one entering the game in Ames, Iowa, and the Cyclones were a similar 3-1. and one. In a harshly fought game, it was the Cyclones that took this first game, 10-7 over the visiting farmers. They would play continually every year for another 110 years as the Missouri Valley became the Big Six, Big Seven, Big Eight, and eventually the Big Twelve. The series would have many tips and turns, with neither program being necessarily good during the early days of the rivalry. In 1919, the Cyclones thumped K-State 46 to nothing in Ames, leaving the Aggies scoreless for two more seasons before they returned fire in 1922 with a 12-2 victory in Manhattan. Periods of Cyclone dominance would be intermittently interrupted by periods of Wildcat dominance, and so on and so forth. But by 1989, the game was firmly in control of the Cyclones, with Iowa State holding a 45-24-3 record. Then K-State signed some dude named Bill Snyder. Under Snyder from 1989 to 2005, K-State unleashed their pent-up, gluten-fueled anger over their conference mates to the Northeast. Despite dropping the first game in Ames, Snyder would continue to go 13-4 against Iowa State, including a stretch of 10 straight victories against the Cyclones, in a game where he proved Seneca Wallace was not a good quarterback, but ended on two losses. The high fructose corn syrup accumulated over these two seasons without a wheat response was partially responsible for Snyder hanging up the headset for the first time in 2005. Partially. These were Dan McCarney's two lone victories against the Wildcats. Snyder was replaced by Ron Prince in 2006, who, in his three disappointing seasons with the Wildcats, still managed to foster both wheat and two victories against the Cyclones, now led by Gene Chizik. But when Chizik left the Cyclones in 2009, he was replaced by Paul Rhodes. K-State replaced Prince in 2009 with the terror of corn stalks everywhere. Bill Snyder. Again. 2009 also brought about the rebirth of this game. What was once a simple conference game between two like-minded institutions now had unique interests. To match this newfound interest of agricultural proportions, the Big 12 and both schools decided to move the game to a neutral site, Kansas City, Missouri, and Arrowhead Stadium. This game is where the kernels of corn that had once constituted this game exploded into the fiery popcorn of a fully-fledged rivalry. The two Big 12 North teams scrummed early, with K-State quarterback Grant Gregory starting the game with a quarterback dive touchdown in the first after all-conference running back Daniel Thomas grounded the Cyclone defense into cornmeal. But as their namesake, tearing through open wheat fields, the Cyclones stormed back with a field goal and an Austin Arnaud touchdown to go up three. K-State kicker Josh Cherry snuck in a kick with seconds left before halftime to tie the game. The Cyclones would not be denied in the third, continuing their touchdown spree to go up 17-10. to 10. 
with a freak Arnon fumble and recovery by Kansas State's Tyson Hartman led to the Cats recuperating their crop and tying the game with a Gregory touchdown pass to Lamarck Brown. As a lightning strike in a summer thunderstorm, Cat wideout Brandon Banks caught a pass to put K-State up 24-17. A late, high-fructose run by Iowa State to tie the game fell short as K-State's Emmanuel Lemur blocked a PAT and the Cats would win by one. This game, in this moment, turned an interesting game into a rivalry. It was also the birth of its nickname, Farmageddon. Some even more interesting games took place just right after this. Aside from a 41-7 outlier from K-State in 2013, games from 2009 to 2018 were decided by just one score. Sometimes even in the last second, as Skylar Thompson in 2017 had to say. In his second campaign, Snyder only lost to the Cyclones once in his final season, 2018. He totaled a 22-5 record against them but a corn-fed warrior had entered the fray for Iowa State in 2016. Former Toledo head coach Matt Campbell, who replaced Rhodes following an embarrassing Farmageddon loss. In Campbell's career against K-State, he's 3-4, with each of his three victories being important. 2018 saw Bill Snyder's last ever football game as he entered retirement the following season. In 2020, his Cyclones trounced a heavily COVID-depleted Wildcat team 45-0 in a game that probably shouldn't have even been played, and a game which whipped the flames of the rivalry further into a fervor than it had ever seen online. Just one year later, his Cyclones trounced K-State again, this time on the back of Kansas native and current New York Jet, Brees Hall at running back, who promptly flipped the K-State hand signal upside down after a long touchdown. No love lost there, it seems. The game had reached legitimate rivalry status. No more jokes, no more stupid Twitter arguments about whether or not it should even be a rivalry. No, there was genuine hatred, genuine animosity in the Farmageddon rivalry. On the opposing sideline replacing Snyder came the Iowa native, Chris Kleiman, the newest apostle of wheat. Kleiman's squad has had some rough ups and downs against Iowa State. From a thrilling victory in 2019, immediately followed by the scoreless drubbing in Brees Hall game, but then came back for his first win of the state of Iowa as head coach of the Cats in 2022. A gritty 10-9 slugfest where the Wildcats turned the EF5 strength of an Iowa State Cyclone into a meager EF0. Very little damage occurred. As mentioned before, aside from a few outliers, this game is largely decided by one-score games that tear the hearts out of fans of both squads. High levels of gluten or corn sugar are never good for the heart, but these games are even worse. For now, the Cyclones lead by two, but fan bases of both schools know that the only thing for certain with this game is chaos. Don't expect anything, because everything is on the table. It's even started to bleed over into basketball despite being a largely football-focused game for both schools. But the game itself is limited now, with the new Big 12 schedule matrix being released. One of the intriguing pieces of Farmageddon lore is in its longevity. These teams have played each other uninterrupted since 1917, through world wars and pandemics. They are the only rivalry to have been played in this fashion uninterrupted, though others have been played for longer. Even the Cyhawk and Sunflower Showdown games have had interruptions. Not this game. At least not until 2027, where the two teams are not scheduled to play each other at all due to the game not being a protected rivalry under the new schedule system. There are a lot of questions about this game especially with its future up in the air as it is right now. But one thing is for certain. You can run from it, you can hide from it, but Farmageddon arrives all the same. It may just be the goofiest, yet most intense, rivalry in college sports that you have never heard of. Until now.